I could stay speechless for a long time, but you guys know me. I don't rest on the accomplishments of what we've done. It's only possible because we just keep pushing forward and I could talk about it for hours, but what we're gonna do right now, let's focus on one thing and that's how is the car? And as you saw, there was oil everywhere. There were chunks of tempered glass, little baby triangles and squares everywhere. The whole flat bottom is covered in everything. So we're gonna get this thing up and look at all the damage. But let's talk about the overall damage first. First is the necessary damage, which is Isaiah's handiwork. This is the fourth time he's had to do this. Every dyno session, every time we've had to do something, we've had to cut more of the car apart, and that fender was no exception. The rubber and the suspension does have some give, and the tire kicked the fender out. It like, broke its neck. It's like the fender <laughs> did that. So that part had to go away just because of safety. Uh, all four tires did get a little bit of scoring from stopping, going, the, the, we put them to use, but there was no danger with that. And oh my God, did they hold. Obviously the uh, elephant in the room is that the hood is over here, both parts of it. it ripped through the, the actual fittings. Halfway through that run, it, it got enough air from our special little turbo vent and decided to say goodbye to me in one of the most epic, spectacular fashions possible. But when it did that, it came up and thankfully the little crease I'd made between the two different hoods basically folded onto the windshield. windshield never got hurt. It hit the roof and then whiplashed onto the rear window, snapping into millions of little glass pieces. We had a GoPro on that. We have no idea where it's at. Sorry, we're, Dave. Yeah, sorry, Dave. It was a brand new GoPro 9 too. And so we're gonna take the whole flat bottom off. Hopefully the GoPro shows up. That's the first hope. Or it's sitting off in the field somewhere back at Hoonigan's runway. But we're gonna pick it up now and just show you how how much dirt and oil and everything this car created. So what you see here is my beautiful blue Valvoline keeping me protected. It blew that line wide open, but the engine never lost oil pressure and the rest of it ended up going onto the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these panels down <laughs> and pull all the crap that's out from under it it's amazing. You can have like only a quart of oil, which is still actually a lot, dump, and it'll look like an absolute mess. It was an absolute mess. So far everything was looking fine, just full of shit. <laughs> well, look at this. The only parts of the rear window that held together are the ones of the logo of the firing on all rotors, which I want to point out, we very much did fire on all rotors. So I'm going to hold on to that. So people say rotaries don't make torque, and traditionally I agree with them. Short of this car, and maybe a handful of drag cars, that is generally the case, except right here. Well, this doesn't look exactly like my shop, but it is my brother's garage, and you can see his uh, 1000 horsepower 12C here in the background. Just like my shop, this place is perfect for having Simply Safe. There's a really funny reason why we love Simply Safe here. And it's because when we're downstairs gaming and we order food online when it's getting delivered, we can actually check the front doorbell to make sure that, that we thought we heard them and that they're at the front door and they've left the food there. It's a really useful reason for having it, as well as the fact that here, my brother and my house here in Michigan both have had floods in their basement, and Simply Safe has a little unit for detecting flood water. So not only is it comprehensive with all the security side of things, it's also the safety of your house. And, well, Kev's car. <laughs> it manages all the security. It'll call the police if there's something wrong in that regard. There's no contract and it's wonderfully affordable compared to traditional home alarm systems. There's the cameras, motion sensors, door entry sensors. If you're interested in learning more about Simply Safe, go to simplysafe.com slash robdom to learn more. That's simplysafe.com slash robdom. They were one line and this just shows you how much torque this car was producing on those launches. It moved each time. It moved maybe about, whatever, 10 degrees, five degrees. Anytime I was under high horsepower when I was close to 1400 plus and launching it at 20 PSI, the tire 
and the rim who disagreed with each other. And this is proof right there that it happens. Even though, had you not drawn these lines, we would have assumed that, hey, it's holding perfectly. This was also, by the way, I want to point out, not at super low PSI. Normally on the three rotor, I'll, I'll start at 18 PSI tire pressure and go lower. This was only at 20 PSI tire pressure. There's still more inflated than normal, than what I'm used to. That's insane. At first I thought this was glass. This is actually rocks from the front tire being kicked up. This is a straight up race car at this moment. It beat the shit out of the car. Showing you that the front tires did slip on two of the launches. Flat bottom off in 30 flat seconds. Bottom. Gotta just slide off that one that's sitting right there. Oh shit, that's dirty as hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a... We're gonna... Uh, there. Oh, there's your window. Just set it straight down. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is epic. I thought that was dirt. That's straight up glass. Yeah, straight up glass. Or big chunks of sand, if you want to think of it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's tempered glass, so it shouldn't cut you too much. Uh, Heisenberg? Yeah, yeah, we got our own blue mask. <laughs> it's all stuck there with the oil. The reason why the rag's here is we had tons of oil underneath the car. The oil got shot in, under the car. I'm like, I do not want it to slide back further and go under the rear tire. <laughs> Part of the hood. Holy crap. Uh, broken <laughs> that, that was one of the very first things we welded too. Yeah, I think that is the first one. Yeah. Tacked it in and let's set it on the ground. She's seen some shit. That's not oil. That's the gear fluid. Oh wow. So that diff finally like torqued enough. And that diff we actually need to move where it's at just slightly because We'll make it even better for turning. Not broken, we can run it again right now. <laughs> perfectly operational, perfectly fine. I hate my oil system. That's, that's the downside. That's the oil system that needs to change stat. We're gonna we'll dry out this whole thing and, and then button it back together and have some fun. It really went from no runs to racing Ken Block and having a one up on him once in five runs. <laughs> More glass. <laughs> oh, I was looking for these. <laughs> And more, oh, there's, I think that's the eye from uh, firing on all rotors. <laughs> well, there is more oil on there than I expected. We cleaned up a lot of it. We had the car pitched up during the race to try and let it leak out, but Valvoline's really good at staying on the metal it needs to protect, and that's exactly what it did. So we're gonna let it sit overnight to get more of it to kind of rain out, and then we'll go hit it with degreaser tomorrow morning and clean it up, and we'll continue that in this video. So now with the guys all back, taking a look at the car and going over all the events, gotten right into cleaning it and I've even gotten into cutting it. So we had each of the wheels basically gave us the marks where they needed to be cut, particularly the driver side, both tires, front and rear. So this one had a little bit of damage from up here and then we think on both sides as well of the front tire, but mostly on the top. And then the back was the same thing. There's an area right here that was, well, you can see it's all covered in, in wheel gunk. Uh, I then also cut this piece out. That piece was also back here, as you saw during the race, that area was actually the thing that cut into the rear tire. So I've trimmed this area, trimmed that area. I'm gonna trim even more of this. I've already used this too much, so we're gonna fine tune this with the smaller little saw. Andrew's about to take off the rear splitter. We've degunked most of it. The reason I'm cutting now is that a lot of the, the oils are off of it. So with the oil off, we still have to dust it all off, so it's like, well, we can create a little bit more dust in the meantime. We've been cutting anything that has gotten close to the wheels, and obviously we've put the car to the most extreme test, so we know the true area that the car is going to move. We're gonna take off a little bit more of the metal in here, get it further away, any sort of contingency, and then take off even more of the whole fender up here. So we'll just radius it just that uh, half an inch more. Again, with the plans that the fender will come out and look good again, but function functionality beats shitty plot kids.
My shirt fell off while it was uh, trying to get air. I did it though. making crystals. <laughs> the tempered glass is glass that you know is meant to break into really small harmless pieces. It won't always, it doesn't 100% of the time, but for the most part it does break into manageable non-life threatening pieces. The funny thing is, is that the front windshield is also tempered glass, but there's a layer of vinyl, hidden layer, I mean you, you're looking right through it, but a layer of vinyl in the middle. And what happens is, is you know, you see the movie, uh, Pineapple Express or something like that, he kicks his foot through it and it's stuck. It doesn't shatter into a thousand pieces. It's the vinyl, the, the rubber basically, holding the rest of the glass in place. Now that you've seen the results of the race, uh, I'm gonna let you guys in on a couple secrets. I'm gonna tell you guys this, but everybody has to be really chill about a lot of things really quick. First of all, my guy that hooks me up and sets me up with all the carbon fiber axles and drive shafts, he wants to do a way of lightening the whole front drive shaft and he wanted more time with that. Well, I went and ordered a copy of all the parts for this to be carbon, and I went and got this chunk of steel from actually uh, Jim Reel, uh, the other guy that you saw helping with the videos back at SEMA last year. The one thing where I lied to you was, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna use this for placement, or I was gonna go get it balanced. Um, neither of those are true, <laughs> and I had the best intentions, but I actually used a drive shaft I made start to finish you know, to welding and everything, you saw that, not balanced, and uh, it made the power it did and transmitted it through there perfectly. That is not something I recommend doing, but we've all been there, and uh, it worked out perfect. So that that's one thing. Another thing I just wanna run through is that like, a lot of the things that we paint marker, not only these locking, but they're also, we put Loctite on here as well. They stayed in, in place, as they should have. You know, that makes sense now. Everything's pretty solid, no, no leaks. The biggest problem while racing Ken wasn't all the cool wild stuff, it was turning around. And I hope by the time Hoonigan airs the video that you see that Ken does like this 360, 180 and rolls past me and then I end up having to do a five point turn to turn around when we got to the end of the race. The reason why was my CV joints in the front. And what you're seeing here, this is only about 30 degrees of angle. It's not too impressive. The stock FD is somewhere in, the, in this area, but we've already addressed it. I'll show you in this picture here, you'll see that the head of the bolts were getting rounded off because they were actually hitting the axle on this wild angle. The angle was actually hitting the head of the bolts. And so we went and took all those down. As soon as I would start turning really tight, all of a sudden it was clink, 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 clink. And of course you know that that's a bad noise, no matter what car it is. And so I let off. And so then I was doing really shallow turns. So I never got to experience this car at full lock. And furthermore, those kind of saved me from whatever it is going to hit next. We don't, we have no idea what the bump limit or the, the steering angle limit is. I do know on the, the stock wheels that we have on here, the bronze ones, the Vossens, it does actually hit the control arms. So uh, we're going to continue just turning the t tire harder and harder and getting things out of the way. But one of the things we're going to try doing first is this is a CV joint and a little stub axle is meant for an off-road truck, not a car. And so there's some space here that could really be shrunken down and brought closer to the axis of the, this wheel. What does that mean? The tire turns, the axle isn't having to do such a hard angle to make that power transmit to the wheel. So instead it's closer to that. This is our current angle. We might actually have the same angle, but the tire's turning tighter. 